Cause you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle And I know Church, let's stand on our feet. We're going to worship our Father today. Help us out. Come on.
seated really quick. Uh, my name is Taylor Wenzel. I am one of the worship leaders here. And we're so excited that y'all have chosen West Cobb as a place to come and worship and be with Jesus today. Um, one really quick announcement. If you're new, we'd love for you to grab your phone and download the uh, West Cobb Church app. There you can find out all the information about who we are as a body and uh, find the different ways to get connected through groups and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but as you guys know, October has been Pastor Appreciation Month. And uh, yeah, come on, yeah. And as a church, we've been praying for our pastors. So uh, pastors and ministry leaders, if you could please make your way to the stage, we would like to honor you guys uh, this morning. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, being a pastor or a ministry leader is so much more than just a Sunday. Um, God is using these individuals throughout our week, not just when we see them on Sundays. And we are so grateful as a church for what they are doing in this house. God is using them in mighty ways. And uh, I just want to welcome them all. Okay, awesome. Is everybody here? Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all get them a round of applause. Um, so this morning, um, we have just a couple of sweet, sweet gifts uh, for you guys. Um, just a few cards and flowers for our ladies. Um, we are honored to have you as a part of our church body. We're honored to have you serving as a part of this ministry. Um, it wouldn't happen without you guys. And it's more than just a month of appreciation, but we take this time just to bring attention to all of the good that you guys are doing and all the good that God is doing through you. Uh, I would be remiss if I don't pray over these amazing people. So church, if uh, you'll bow your heads with me, we're gonna say a prayer. Father God, Holy Spirit, thank you for every single person standing on this stage, God. Thank you for the hours that they give week in, week out, God. Their, their servant hearts, Lord. Lord, each of these people, I know them, God. They want to see your name brought in lights, Jesus. They want to see your name brought to the forefront of this community, God. They want to see your will be done. Lord, I pray a strong protection against uh, any, anything from the enemy, Lord, anything that they would come up against, Jesus. I pray in your mighty name that the demons would flee, that the darkness would run. Holy Spirit, fill them from head to toe, God. Use them as you see fit. Jesus, we pray this in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Can we give them all a round of applause, please? Thank you. You guys can be seated. Thank you so much. Yeah, come on. You guys can be seated. Um, we are going to, uh, we're going to actually honor one more of our pastors uh, this morning. <laughs> um, so I just want to give a special shout out to Chad Cannon. Um, and uh, so <laughs> Chad has served for, you know, I told him uh, it's only just a few months. Um, so and then we kept no, trying not. You said a little longer than me, Yes, yeah, so. maybe, maybe three. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot longer than that. But Chad has served as our interim student pastor. And um, so now uh, he is being released from West Cobb and taking the next steps in his ministry and in his life. And we've got, you know, we're fortunate here at West Cobb is we've got some really strong leaders, uh, people that are stepping in with uh, Spencer Wenzel and Zach Doleweiler and others that will be uh, helping to lead our student ministry. But Chad stepped in in a great time of transition, which was important to me because I've known Chad for a, a while, <laughs> a long time, and, um, and so known his family for a long time. Actually, Angela <coughs> and uh, his brother Cam went to, they rode together to go to to Roswell Street, I think, for preschool, like when they were three. Yeah. So that's how long I've known the, the, the Cannon family. So uh, not that I was married to Angela at that age, but, uh, but Chad's done a wonderful work uh, here for us. He stepped in, trust him completely, and I just wanted to tell you I love you. I love you too, buddy. And, I really do. Uh, uh, you mean a lot to me. Appreciate it. Love I've you, enjoyed brother. it. It's been a good time. Love you. Yeah, love, love you, you too, buddy. You're a good man. Thank you. All right, let's stand to our feet. <laughs> We're going to continue to worship. And 
uh, there's a passage in Habakkuk chapter 2, and the prophet speaks to the people of God. And he says, listen, sometimes you can worship the wrong thing. And here's how he says that. He says, you, you've put value on these idols that have been carved by the hand of man. And you're worshiping these things that are man-made. So now what I want you to do, though, is I want you to understand that you are coming into the presence of you are coming into the Lord's temple. You're coming into the presence of Almighty God, the creator of all things. So when we come in here today, when we come in here today, our time of worship is not to be wasted. This 30 minutes that we allot to giving praise is to give praise not to the things that are made by our own hands, but it's to give honor and praise to the creator of all things, right? And so, as we come into this next song, Sea of Victory, enter into this presence of God and, and declare victory in your life and the life of other people that's based not on who we are, not on what we can do, not what our hands can accomplish, but it's based on the power of the living God and his Holy Spirit that wants to meet with us right now. So if you're here today and you're looking for victory, call on God. If you're here today and you're celebrating victory, to God be the glory. Amen. Let us sing together.
We sing.
We're just going to wait for a second. We're just going to wait. Whatever is on your heart this morning, whatever you're carrying, this is your moment. This is your moment to lay it at the foot of the cross right here, right now. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. We're just going to wait. Jesus, 
I don't want it to end. <laughs> I don't want to stop worshiping you, Father. Oh, Jesus, your presence is in this place. Thank you, God, for meeting us right here, God. Thank you for the work that you're doing in this house and beyond in our community, Jesus. Thank you for showing up. Thank you, Father. We never have to doubt your presence. We never have to doubt if you are for us, Jesus, you are. You are for us. God, I pray right now in your mighty name that as Pastor David comes and he brings your word today, Lord, that our hearts and our minds and our ears would be open and ready to hear from you, God. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the work that you're doing. It's in your heavenly name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Woo! All right, good morning. good morning. Ephesians chapter 6, we will be in verses 1 through 4. We're continuing our series directed toward the family. Family <clears throat> is critical. Uh, it's critical in our development as individuals. It's critical in the accountability that we need to have in our own personal lives. And every single individual that's a part of the family has a critical function to be fulfilled. We've spoke uh, to fathers. We've spoke to mothers. Um, we now, this week, are going to speak to kids, children, right? Which, by the way, it doesn't matter if we're one or 100, we still got a mom and a dad, right? And so this text, don't turn it off because you, you know, you're like, uh, I'm not a kid at home anymore. Don't turn it off because we're going to look at honoring our parents and that continues throughout all of our lives, does it not? And so today in Ephesians chapter six, verses one through four, we're going to dive in together and the title of the message today is Give Honor. Give honor. Now, to start with that, um, David, could you hand me that rag that's on the front there? You can throw it to me. I can. Well, yeah, pretty good, bro. All right. Very good. Uh, when I was 12 years of age, um, you know, I knew, I grew up in church, that I had a responsibility to honor my parents. And one of the ways that I honor my parents would be, as a child growing up, how I conducted my life, right? So it's, it was the things that I did. So my parents instilled in me at a very, very early age that the things that I did with my life brought honor or dishonor to them. And so I was very, very aware of that, whether it was how I did in school or whether it was how I did in sports or whatever it may be, I wanted to honor my mom and my dad. I didn't want my parents to be disappointed in me. But there was a moment that I distinctly remember where I didn't bring honor as a kid to my mom and to my dad. <laughs> and as you guys know, it probably has something to do with sports. So I was 12 years of age and I was pitching in a playoff game at Milford Ballpark. Some of you may know where Milford Ballpark is. And so I, uh, it was a playoff game, and, and so it had extra meaning. And at that time, I was like a dominant 12-year-old. Um, so I threw the ball really hard, and my dad taught me a trick. Just beam the first two kids that come up. I mean, just laser the first, and nobody else will, want, will hit the ball because they're not going to want to step into the batter's box. So that was my method. So when you first came up, I mean, I am going to just, shoo, boom, if you're one or two, you're getting plunked. So, but in this particular game, I was getting hit a little bit 
But it, what even made it worse was the guys behind me were making errors. And I started to act a little bit like a, a, a brat. And so I was turning around. I was yelling at my teammates. I was that guy. Like, can't you catch the ball? You, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And so I was so angry that when the inning was over, I took my glove and I tossed it from the mound to the dugout, right? And, uh, and uh, that was not good. <laughs> because at that moment, <clears throat> what I heard was not my dad, but what I heard was my mom. And do you guys remember growing up, they had what was called a, 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 a sugar titty, right? Or a pacifier, do you remember? And they would take a rag, and when a child was teething, that, that, that child would, that baby would, you know, chew on that pacifier. So suddenly I hear from the stands, you big baby, do you need a sugar titty? <laughs> and it was my mom. <laughs> and she was coming down from those bleachers and it was on, <laughs> on. And, need, and when she was ticked, it was bad. I mean, it was, I'll take dad over mom any day of the week. Because she was, whatever was in her hand, she was, I was getting it. And, uh, and so, guess what? I never threw my glove ever on a baseball field, ever again. Because I, in that moment, she let me know, I brought to her dishonor. By the way that I was behaving, I brought to her dishonor. And so, as children, no matter the age, we are responsible for giving our parents honor. It is an Old Testament principle that we see in the Ten Commandments. It's commandment number five. But it's also a New Testament principle that we even see where Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, brings it forward and speaks to us. But honoring our parents is the fifth commandment. It is to be obeyed, and it is the one commandment with promise. So in honoring my parent and my parents, there comes a blessing. Get that. In honoring my parents, there is a blessing associated with that. It is important that we bring honor to our parents. If you're a child at home and here today, you have a responsibility. It's not a suggestion, it's a command that you bring honor to your parents. If you are out of the home, as you guys know, as our parents age, there is a need. We've got, I know several of our members whose parents are in a position that they are older and they need help, they need support, they need someone to be there. And in that, we bring honor to our parents throughout the rest of their lives. Now, the Apostle Paul felt that this was so important that he set a groundwork in the New Testament. And you can note this, in the book of Romans, chapter one, verses 29 and 30, Paul is giving this list of sins that really tick God off, that stir up the wrath of God. There are things that just get his attention. And so the apostle Paul writes, and he says, listen carefully to this list. He says, if you are filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, debate, deceit, gossip. I mean, he goes on and on and on and on, and he ends it with disobedient to parents. God is riled up when we are disobedient to our parents. When we don't bring honor to our parents, it's not something scripturally that God looks at with favor. God expects us as children to bring honor. So there's two questions today that I want us to consider as we look at Ephesians chapter six. One, what does it mean to honor our parents? What does that mean? Number two, 
why should I honor my parents? So let's read together Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with what? A promise. That it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, we're not going to disconnect this. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. The first thing we want to look at is a child's command. In verses 1 through 3, we're going to look at the command that Paul gives to the children and his reference to the fifth commandment. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. So first of all, it's a simple command. <laughs> it's a very simple command. Obey. That means do that which is right. It's not complicated. I can't overanalyze this and give you some, you know, great definition that you're like, oh, I didn't know that's what obey meant. No, it means obey. Do that which is right. Do that which you are told. So children, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility scripturally to obey your parents. Now, it's easy for us as children to kind of do our thing, is it not? All of us, no matter what, what age we are, in our progression in life, we had that moment where it was what? About me, about what I was going to do, about how I was going to do it. So like in this room, there are some of you that are in this room, you were probably that very compliant child. You did what you were told, and because of that, you made a very easy life for your parents, did you not? How many of you would say, I was the compliant child? Raise your hand, it's okay, all right? Now, there are others of you that are in this room that there was a, a period of time where you didn't make it so easy for your parents, did you not? You were considered to be a rebellious child, right? And some of you I know because you've shared stories with me. Um, and, and so you didn't make necessarily life easy for mom and for dad. And you would be considered that child that had a rebellious period. You were the one who decided you were going to sneak out at night. You were the one that decided that you were going to go to that party, were you not? You were the one who decided... Whatever mom and dad said, I'm doing the opposite. I don't care what it is. I am going to do exactly the opposite. So the first thing I ask is, how many of you that are parents have that child? Raise your hand. Now, how many of you in this room, you were that child? Now, all I have to say is sometimes there's payback. <laughs> that child that you may have may come back. What you were may come back to haunt you, right? Right? You, it may come back just a little bit to haunt you. We have that conversation at my house. So my girls have just had, you know, their babies. Um, my rebellious daughter, I'm not going to call her name, right? My rebellious daughter, her son is a wild man, right? I'm talking, he is a wild man. Payback, payback, <laughs> payback, right? Now, my, my oldest daughter, she was the compliant daughter, and her, her baby boy is just like, holy cow, I have a hundred of these, right? You sit him in a corner, plays by himself. The only thing he grunts about is food. That's it. So we all have experienced and been on each end of the spectrum. But we all have a responsibility as children to be obedient. That is a biblical responsibility, Disobedience is going to bring into your life punishment. <laughs> and we're all going to be disobedient at times, but it's all designed to do what? 
In disobedience, we learn, do we not? When we do that which is wrong, we learn. That thing which is hot that we should not touch, well, the best way to learn that lesson is to do what? You touch it, correct? And so in our lives, we learn to obey out of disobedience. Parents, listen to me. It is critical that your children understand that, that they are going to do that which is wrong. They are going to go the wrong direction. They're going to make bad decisions. They're going to have bad grades. They're going to have some failure in their life. But as parents, for your children to learn the importance of obedience, it is critical that you are their number one teacher, that they learn from that moment. But here's what I want you to know as a child. Whenever you go through this life, no matter what point in time that you are at, your parents have your best interests at heart. Your parents, no matter how flawed you may think they are, they have your best interests at heart. Now, I know that there are circumstances where that may not be the case. You have a parent that went away. You have a parent that lived a selfish life. You had a parent that gave you life, but they were not involved in your life. What I want you to understand here is Paul starts from the context of parents that are godly. And so, so what we have a responsibility to do here in the church Despite parents that maybe deserted us, despite parents that maybe were flawed and impacting us, that doesn't have to dictate what our go forward is, right? Our go forward is to be what? A godly parent that raises up children that understand the importance of obedience and learn from disobedience in their life. Parents, you have the best, in the best interest of your children at heart. And I don't care what that age is. They could be one or they could be 50. They have your best interest at heart. Now, I'll be very transparent with you. In the loss of my wife, um, there have been moments where it's just me grieving, right? It's only me. This is all about me. It's about my grief. It's about my pain. It's about what I'm going through. And mom had come up to the house. And, and I wasn't thinking about Mom, son, roll, right? Mom wanted to wash whatever clothes I had. And she started to get on to me about the fact that, you know, I had thrown these clothes in the, and I didn't, I'm telling you, I didn't do a whole lot <laughs> on my uh, uh, personal hygiene and things like that. I mean, Angela handled it all. Washing clothes, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, all of it, right? And so, so here now I am alone in this journey and I just threw the socks, they were tied together. And my mother said to me, David, you didn't even take the socks apart when you put them in the washer. Do you know how to wash clothes? Well, my reaction to that in that moment was, I was, uh, I was mad, I was mad. And I popped off at mom. I did, I popped off at mom and, and was harsh with mother. And they left and I knew that I had upset my mom. But what I really came to understand is that mom was doing what she was born to do. She was being a mom to me, and I had to call her, and I had to apologize because she still was my mom, interested in my well-being. All she cared about was me in that moment. Who had my best interest at heart in that moment? My mom, she did. And as a result of that, it is me that should give her what? Honor. You never stop loving your kids. You never stop being involved in their lives. Kids, parents have your best interest at heart. When they say you shouldn't hang out with that person, listen. When they question, I don't think you should be in that relationship, you better listen. When they direct you into God's plan and purpose for your life and they see the gifting in your life, you better listen. When they step in and speak into your life, listen, because there's no person on this earth that has your interest at heart more than your parent, especially, especially a godly parent. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for those of us who have parents that are aging, 
I want to speak to you for just a moment. Our culture, Western culture, for whatever reason, the Western culture, is a bit flawed. If you go into an Asian culture, if you go into the Indian culture, as people age, they are revered, not just respected, they are revered. Um, their wisdom, their knowledge, the fact that they impacted life, they are revered by all parties. In fact, in some of those societies, when that elderly individual walks into the room, you stand and you give honor to that elderly individual. But in Western culture, for whatever reason, it's like we're living our life, we're doing our thing, nothing is to disrupt that, including aged people. And it's creeped into Western culture. And it is not biblical. <laughs> it is not a biblical view of how our aged individuals should be revered, should be honored. And as your parents age, I wanna share with you a story that I recently read that I thought is very, very insightful. Once upon a time, there was a, it was a little old man. And this little man was compelled to live with his son and his son's wife and their family. And this little old man was beginning to decay physically and he would blink a lot and, and he had tremors. And this trembling was involuntary. And so when they would sit at the table and that they would eat at the table as often as they could, it was very difficult for him to even put food in his mouth. So he would shake and he couldn't get food in his mouth. And so in this nice home, this food was kind of going everywhere. And so the daughter-in-law was quite irritated about this mess that was being made. And so she began to say, I don't wanna, I, I can't deal with all this mess and with all this filth. And so she said to her husband, we're going to take him and we're gonna sit him at a table to the side and we're gonna put a bib on him and we're going to give him an earthen bowl and he can just eat everything from the bowl. So they moved him to the side, set him at a table and they put a bib on this aged man who's dealing with these tremblings. And so in that process, there was a particular day where he was eating once again trying to eat, and the trembling was getting worse, and he knocked the bowl over. And when he knocked the bowl over, it fell on the floor, and the daughter-in-law was quite irritated about the whole process. And so what she then decided to do is she got one-on-one -on -one with her husband, and she came up with this plan to build what was essentially a trough, like you would feed pigs out of. And so it was stable, and they had this trough, and they would put the food, and then that way, he didn't even have to use his hands even. He could just bend over, and he could eat out of this trough. And you sit back, and you think about that story, and what is your reaction to that story? Get a dog. <laughs> Get a dog. That's what I heard, right? So, now, here's what happened. One day, the husband and wife they were in the, the backyard, and the son, his name was Billy, and they loved him, and Billy had a board, and he was in the backyard, and he was working on this board. He had all these tools, and he was working around this board, and the mom looked up to Billy and said, Billy, what are, what are you doing? What is it that you're trying to build? And here's what the little boy said. I'm building a trough that when I grow up and get big, I'm going to have to use it to serve you and dad out of it. Ha ha. <laughs> Payback. Payback. We are to give honor for a lifetime. Honor is not just related to a child in the home. Honor is given for a lifetime. How you live your life, children, how you conduct your life, who you are as an individual brings honor to your parents throughout all the days of their life. All the days of their life. 
Is that not true? There's nothing that brings more honor to a parent than to see your child move from that rebellious teenager to that functional adult, to starting their own family, to building their own lives. And you get to see them strengthen. You get to see them grow. You get to see them become. And it it gives honor because it says to that parent, I did something right. I mean, of all the times we think that we just screwed up our children, of all the times that we think we did so much that was wrong, when we see them growing and becoming what God has designed them to be, in a way it is essentially giving honor to us as parents. And that honor is for a lifetime. Number two, honor is given, children, by how you conduct your life. Don't forget that. Honor is given by how you conduct your life. If you choose to be a rebel, if you choose to go your own way, if you choose to say whatever voice the parent had in my life, I'm going to do the opposite of, and you choose to live a negative life, you choose to live a fruitless life, (coughs) excuse me, that does not give honor to your parents. Honor comes when you live a life that they can point to and it reflects in your life, God has had a hand. The fulfillment of God's purpose is evident in your life. So we have a responsibility to understand that honor is for a lifetime. We have a responsibility to know that honor is given by how we conduct our life before God and before man, and honor is given despite the flaws of your parents. Listen to me. God will honor this. Some of you grew up in an environment where on the surface, it would be my parents don't deserve honor. But listen, Within your body is their DNA. It formed and shaped, that DNA formed and shaped much of who you are, how you look, your personality, traits, even your talents, things of that nature. They came from your parents. And listen, the gift that you have been given, despite maybe mistakes that they have made, is life. Because you've been given the gift of life, what you have the opportunity to do is to pursue what it is that God wants you to be. You as an individual, your soul can become what God designed you to be. You have that opportunity. And you can say, all these little things that my parents did over here, all the times that they abandoned me, all the times that they left me, you could take that, you can hold on to that, and you can choose to allow that to hold you back. Or you can honor your heavenly father by saying, I'm gonna step into the plan of God, the purpose of God. God gave me life and I am going to do all that I can to fulfill the life that God has given me. And that is a change in how you think because who you're honoring is your heavenly father despite what it is that you may have experienced as a child. It's easy to say, it's hard to do, but I promise you, God will bless your life if you choose to live according to that fashion. Now, I want to give a final warning. I don't want to disconnect this passage. There's a child's command, but in verse 4, there's a father's warning. And I want you to listen closely. I'm going to read it, verse 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Why fathers? Fathers in the biblical home, (coughs) in the New Testament church, the father ultimately was responsible for ensuring that the discipline took place. And the responsibility of the home is to train and instruct. It is to teach and it is to build. You are to create a constructive environment for your child. Give them something to want to obey. (laughs) Give them an example that reflects God. Give them an example that reflects the true nature of God. Now, what you don't understand about Christianity is that Christianity, this was revolutionary. 
What do you mean? Do something that's gonna benefit the child? In this society at this time, you did what you were told, period, end of story. You did not have a voice. In fact, by Roman law, it was called the father's power. By Roman law, the father had the power to put a child to death. The father had the power to put a child, if, if you had a disobedient child, you know what you would do with that child? You would send them into slavery. You would sell them off to someone who needed a servant and you could not control that child. That child was of no benefit to you and you moved them into a slavery environment. Did you know that? The father had absolute power undenied power nobody could come against the power of the father the father stepped in whatever he chose to do with that child was his choice and it was to be followed to come in here and say train and instruct it was contrary to the society why did he say train and instruct because children listen you want obedience in your life and you want to listen to instruction in your life you want to have a parent and you want to allow a parent that's going to train you, to develop you, to move forward with you. Why is that important? It is important because the investment that your parent is making is an investment by God. Your parent is doing the best that they can possibly do to train you up and push you in the direction that God would have for your life. And fathers, you have to drive that responsibility. Do not neglect it. Training drives correction. Training drives discipline. Training results in the nourishment of the mind, of the body, of the soul. And that's what your household should be. That's what it should be. Fathers, don't focus on your power. Focus on the plan of God that he has for every single individual in your home and drive toward training and nourishing and disciplining in a corrective way that leads that child to God's fullness, period. Now, children, I want you to listen to me today as we close. Raising kids is hard. You need to give your parents a stinking break, okay? Now listen to me. Some of you make it even harder, okay? But it's hard. There's a lot coming at your parents today. If you're in the home, there's a lot coming at your parents that makes this really, really tough. Let me share with you, listen closely, let me share with you some information. There was a survey of 2,000 Americans with children, and it revealed that parents spend an average of almost five hours per day on something related to their kids. Five hours a day. One in 10, it's eight hours or more. You think about that. If it's eight hours or more, first of all, your parents are probably working a job because most most households now have two parents that are working a full-time job, okay? So let's, let's kind of get this, let's put this in perspective. Eight hours at least they're working. If you're in travel ball, if you're in competition cheer, I remember all those days, you're putting in 10 and sometimes, whoop, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, brother. You're putting in 10 and you're sometimes putting in 12, right? Are you not? Why? Because you got to pay for, I remember my daughter, Caitlin, coming home, sharing with me how if she started competition cheer, it was gonna be cheaper than dance, right? She wrote me a letter, made me a deal, said, Dad, here it is. I'm gonna, if I do cheer, it's only $10,000 a year. If I do dance, it's $12,000 a year. And oh, by the way, if you let me do cheer, I'll do golf, I'll throw in golf. If you'll let me, I'll do that, because I know that means a lot to you. Literally wrote me a letter to do that. And it was sitting right there. And so, it's hard. It takes up time. You think about the time you spend working, the time you spend in activity, and then, oh, you're supposed to sleep? <laughs> it's hard. It's a difficult, it's a difficult path. And now you've got all these things that come up against you. You've got social media, you've got the jobs, you've got other voices, you've got the rise of technology, all these things, 
<coughs> excuse me, that are coming at your parents. But here's the most significant one. From zero to 18, on average, going into 2022, I was asked this morning about inflation. Do you know how much it cost to raise a child? $286,000 on average. $286,000. It's a lot of money. It's an investment of time. It's an investment of money. Children, your parents, they got a lot on them with you being here on this earth. There's a lot to the investment that's being made in your life. So I leave you today with this challenge. If you're in the home, what can you do to make sure today, before the week starts, what can you do to say to your parents, I appreciate you? Just one thing, you do it. I don't care if it's a card. I don't care if you go get them a $5 gas card. It would be worth it right now. Whatever it is, you go say to your parent, I appreciate you and I love you. Do it however you choose. Cook them a meal, draw them a picture, but you say to mom and you say to dad, you say to your parent or your parents, I love you. And then for those of us who have parents that are aging, how do we bring to them honor? You choose. What are you going to do? Is it a phone call? Is it a card? Is it a meal? What are you going to do to say, I love you, I honor you, and I appreciate you? Children, obey your parents. Honor your father and your mother for what comes with it, a promise of a long life. That means a fulfilled life. Doesn't all, it doesn't necessarily mean just age, but it means a fulfilled and a complete life. Let us pray over our families. I want to pray, if you would, with me now. I want to pray for our children, and we're going to <clears throat> end on this prayer, and then we've got some, uh, we're going to move into the other parts of the service rather quickly today. But I want you right now, church, let's bind together and let's pray for our children and pray over them as a body. Father God, right now, in the power of your precious name, I pray for the children that are in this room. Lord, for those that are still in the home, God, I just pray that one small thing would have come across today and entered their hearts and minds and that they will gain a renewed respect for their parents. I pray, God, that they will be mindful that the life that they are living is a life that reflects on their parents, but even more importantly, it reflects on our Heavenly Father. And God, through our lives, no matter what age we are, may who we are, what we do, how we conduct ourselves shine a light on the greatness of who you are just as it shines a light on the glory of our parents and their commitment to our lives. And then, Father, for those of us who are out of the home and we are in our lives and all the things that come with that, may we not forget, may we remember that our life still brings honor, that our life is still to be lived in a way that gives respect gives respect to our mothers and to our fathers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> I enjoyed that. <clears throat> we, um, I don't, we don't talk to our kids directly in sermons much anymore. And... Uh, I was very excited about, about this. Um, we kind of ship them out, right, because we don't want to make any noise and, you know, we got to keep them entertained. But you know what? Sometimes it's good that they just hear a word from God, right? And so um, I'm grateful that for, the, for uh, being able to share with you today. Um, church, it's important 
that we continue to support the ministry and give to the ministry. Um, there's so much that we want to do to be, be able to invest, and we're going to be talking about this a little bit later. We're pushing our budget. We're trying to stretch ourselves in 2023 and because we want to do more for our teens, our student ministry. We've got things that we want to do in the back to get all of our modulars renewed. We've, we've, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we've got the new roof uh, put on where, where we had some damage. And, and so on that side, I don't know if you noticed, uh, it's a nice little good color palette. that I think Laura chose that. I might have looked at it and got, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Laura chose the color palette, and so it looks really, really nice. We're able to do those things to make sure that what we have physically and what we have spiritually is in order so that God can be glorified. So as you give, there's multiple ways that you can give. Number one, you can give via the app. You can download our app and you can give via the app. You can go to wccgive.com. Um, and then you can give as you leave today through the drop boxes that are there. And then you can obviously just write a check uh, to the church. But I challenge this body as we come into the end of the year, we've got a lot of needs that we're going to be looking to meet. We got hope for Christmas. We've got various activities that are going on. We've got a bridge event where we have coffee house. We've got things that we do during the Thanksgiving season to help those that have needs. Let us step forward both in our time, in our energy, and in our giving to be able to meet these particular needs. So that's my challenge to you. Now, in addition to that, I want to mention today, if you're interested in being a partner of West Cobb Church, you're not a partner of West Cobb Church, right after the service, we have lunch for you. It's called Discover West Cobb, and you can learn more about what is happening at West Cobb Church. Who The leaders, where we're going, our vision, our strategy, and lunch is free. It's on us. But if you want to be a partner or thinking about being a partner, literally spend one hour with us. I mean, by the time you left here, you go to Longhorn, they get that order. You, I'm telling you, I'll have you out before then. All right? So, uh, so stay with us if you're interested in being a partner in this ministry and join us out in the lobby for Discover West Cobb. Okay? Very, very important. Um, now, today, <coughs> we do have business that we have to... Uh, conduct. And so uh, I'm just going to share with you. So there are ballots that many of you have received as you came in today. And these ballots, there's two things today that you need to vote on as a ministry partner. Number one, which we're going to pray over this, is the leadership team. Now here is the purpose of the leadership team. The leadership team, when our church was going through transition, had to step in and become an operating body. That's not the intent. So Bill and Misty and I, when the church was going, I mean, we just had to do what we had to do, and, um, and now I'm pastor, so I don't know how that happened, right? So, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but we, so I'm not, please don't let that, you, some of you might take your name off the list now. <laughs> See, Clay, do you still want to be on the list? David, do you still, Frank, you still want to be on the list? It's, <laughs> so, just, uh, just be careful. Uh, but the, the, the purpose of the leadership team is not an operating body. It is to help the pastor, pray with the pastor in guiding and directing the vision and to challenge the pastor. To challenge the pastor in, are we headed the right way? Are we do I don't want, listen to me, I, don't, I want you to be clear. As you look at this list, we've got eight <laughs> really good people. We've got an, an incumbent as well. And so when you look at this, you're ranking these individuals. So you got to give someone your number one vote. You got to say, that's my number two person. That's my number three person. Does that make sense? So you're going to take this document and you're going to say, all right, for the leadership team, here is Bill. He's my number one. Here's Susie, my number two. Here's, look at a name I don't have on here, so I'm not swaying any votes. Um, Jill, and she's my three, right? So, so think about that when, today as you vote over the leadership team. It is a spiritual team praying with the pastor, helping the pastor when it comes to significant decisions around vision and strategy. And I will say this. I've been very transparent with you guys. My wife 
was my place of discernment. She had the gift of discernment. And I have fear that I don't have that, and I'm praying for it. <laughs> I promise you, I'm praying for it. Uh, but but I, I, I have fear that that discernment is not in my life. And so this is important to me. It's very, very, very important to me who these individuals are because if you knew Angela, she was full of discernment. <laughs> um, and so this is important. This is not just don't, listen, just don't brush over this. And so I want to pray over this. The second thing is the budget. And the budget, we're stretching it a little bit. We pushed it. We've done a lot to clean up. Uh, we've worked <laughs> with Mark and Laura and the resource team, and we've really cleaned a lot of things up financially. But we're trying to push, and, and with pushing means we got to be committed to doing our part to stretch it. It's always good to stretch yourself a bit, and we are. Uh, but we're also doing it at a time to where we're dealing with a lot of inflation, a lot of things changing just around our lives financially. So we're trying to be good stewards, realistic, but you just note, do I approve the budget, yes or no? Um, and, and you'll note that on there. You just circle that. There's the end of 2022, just so you know, the last quarter here that we built, and then there's all of 2023. So once we do this, we're good till next year, okay? And then these vacancies on leadership team, Please, make sure that you're thinking about what I just shared. It's praying over. It's challenging. You don't, I don't want somebody who's just going to agree with everything I have to say. That's not a good thing. That's not what I'm looking for. I don't mind people going, that's a dumb idea, all right? So I don't mind that. It really doesn't offend me at all. Um, so maybe a little. But uh, so, um, right. So, do that, um, and then you'll check your partner of the ministry or not a partner of the ministry, your name, your signature, and you'll put that in the Dropbox, okay? So make sure that that goes in the Dropbox. If you don't have a ballot, there are people at the back who have additional ballots that are there, all right? I love you guys. It's been a great day. Thank you for taking a little extra time with us. Let us pray over this, both of these, and we will be dismissed. Father God, we pray now over our budget. Lord, we, we trust you completely in where you want us to go, what you want us to do, and we want to be good stewards in all that we are doing. The next thing, God, is this leadership team is extremely important in coming alongside the pastor. Father, I pray that you would raise up the right individuals here in the body that are there to help be a prayer covering, a discernment covering, um, a, a, a challenging body so that it is iron sharpens iron, that we're pressing each other forward to help us grow spiritually, help us grow as a body. Father, we love you. We trust you in doing this. Spirit of God, you lead in the powerful name of Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys. Y'all have an awesome Sunday. Discover West Cobb. After you vote, just slip right on over into the lobby. Look forward to being with all of you today. God bless you.